Hello, uh, my name is Matthew Randall and welcome to my uh, notes on Python for Maya. Um, what I wanted to focus on on um, uh, this sort of note was um, selecting components. So using Python to select components uh, on an object. So here I have an object, um, it's called, um, I'll just go into object mode, when we select it we can see it's called P-Sphere 1. Okay. So what we can do is we can actually select edges uh, faces and vertices uh, on this sphere. Okay, so I'm just going to do the import um, Maya.cmds uh, as cmds. Okay, uh, and then what we'll do is uh, what we can do is just go. Uh, we can just use the select command. So I can go cmds dot select. Okay, um, and then I can specify the object that I want to select the components from. So in this case, uh, and we just specify the normal um, uh, uh, transform object, okay? Um, we don't need to specify the actual uh, mesh, okay? So we can just say p-sphere, which is our transform object, okay? One, okay, there we go. The transform object is the thing that kind of puts, uh, is the node that puts this object uh, into our scene and positions it and scales it, etc., etc. Okay, so um, yeah, we can refer to it through the transform object, and then I could just go uh, VTX and then just specify the number of the vertex that I want to get. So I'm just going to say VTX2 here. Great. Uh, sorry, end my brackets correctly, uh, and we just run that. Okay, and you can see. If I scroll down here, we've selected a vertex. If I change that, so let's just change that to, I don't know, 50. Let's see what we get. Boom. And you can see it's selected a different vertex. So each vertex and each face and each edge on our um, uh, uh, sphere uh, uh, has a unique number. And we can just access them through this sort of method. So if I want to do, um, uh, if I want to do faces, just swap the VTX for an F. Let's try that. And I've now selected a face. And let's try an edge. Here we go. OK, so um, that's how we can kind of select components um, uh, on an object. So let's imagine we want to do something a little bit more useful um, uh, with, the, uh, with this sort of select component command. Um, uh, so what I want to do is uh, create a script that converts uh, face selections to a vertex selection. Okay, So we've got our import Maya uh, commands as cmds. Okay, And then what we're going to do is, um, uh, let's imagine I've select faces on multiple different objects. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, first of all, I'm just going to go, I'm going to create an um, object list and save all the selected objects to that list. Okay, um, uh, So I'll just go uh, equals uh, cmds dot uh, ls and then obviously put all the selections into there, okay. Um, now, if I'm selecting faces on, uh, if I'm selecting multiple faces, each face will actually appear as its own object, okay. So if I just go um, print uh, obj list, let's have a look. I'm just going to go right click face. Let's just run that, okay. Uh, and uh, my terrible spelling is already getting the better of me. Okay, great. So you can see, uh, if I just, sorry, let's just actually select multiple faces so we can demonstrate that. There we go. So you can see that each um, uh, each face appears as a separate object, okay, when we're, when we're, when we're using it like this, okay. Um, yeah, so, so each face appears as a separate object. So what we want to do is select the vertices uh, that surround or are connected to each face, okay. Um, great. So um, in order to do our selection, what we need to do is obviously clear the existing selection. So we've obviously saved the, the faces that were selected to this. So what we can do in the next command is literally clear it. So I'm going to CDN, uh, sorry, uh, cmds.select. So use the select command. And we'll just go clear equals true. Okay. And if I use an actual equal sign, I find that helpful. Okay, great. Um, now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through each object. So we'll go um, for obj uh, in obj list. 
okay? So all this is gonna do is loop through each uh, object in our list, and every time it goes through the loop, the object that's been focused on in that list, in, in, in that particular loop, will be called obj. So if I print obj, hopefully you will see that happen. Let's go, there we go. So you can see it's looping through, and it's printing each one of these, and also you can see it's cleared the selection this time. Great, okay. So, um, uh, so the uh, first thing we want to do is we want to actually get all the uh, we want to um, get all the vertices connected to that face. Okay, and what we can do is we can use the poly info uh, command to do that. Okay, so um, the, now what the poly info does is it returns a string with all the information of um, what vertices are connected to a face, okay? So if I go, so I'm just gonna call it VTX string, okay? Uh, again, I could call these variables anything I want, I'm just giving them logical names. Uh, I'm gonna go commands.polyinfo, uh, and then we're gonna select, so we're gonna go, uh, we wanna take the object, uh, and we wanna go uh, face, to vertex, so for each object, each, so that's each face, yeah? I'm gonna go face to vertex, okay? If I didn't specify the object, then what it would do is it would create a vertex string with vertexes uh, connected to every, it would show me all the vertexes of all, uh, it would give me the, the vertex number of all the vertexes um, of, uh, of all the vertexes connected to the faces that are selected in one string. I don't want to do that because that's going to make it difficult to manage. I just want it on a per face or per object basis. Okay, so I'm just going to go equals true. Okay, um, and let, let's just see what that gives us. I'm just going to go uh, print uh, btx string. Here we go. Let's try that out. Okay. Ooh, I need to select some faces first. Let's select some faces. Let's run that. Okay. So you can see um, uh, uh, for each face that was selected, it's giving us the vertices that are connected to that face. Excellent. Okay. It's also uh, um, one of the things it's doing as well is it's putting that string inside a list. So it's basically a list with one item. Uh, which is the string, and also it's giving us a lot of other information. So it's giving us the number of uh, the face number uh, that was selected uh, and, and that each of these vertex is connected to, and it's also giving us a kind of, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, this N here, which is, uh, I assume, is just a, a carriage return, uh, escaped carriage return there, okay? So we need to strip out, basically, we need to strip out a lot of information here to get to these numbers. So we've got all of this in string form, we need to get to these numbers. So the first thing we want to do is, basically, we don't want it in a list, okay? It's just one item in each list, and um, so we don't need that in a list. So let's get rid of the list. So if we just say, hey, just give me the first, um, just give me the item, the first item in the list, which is basically this, then that will discard the list. So let's run that again. I'm going to select some more faces. Sorry if I press the correct button, that always helps. Let's do that. Okay, so you can see now what we've done is we've discarded, um, uh, uh, we've discarded this sort of, uh, the brackets that were there before. Great. So we still have this string here, okay? And um, what we don't want is we don't want this information on the face, okay? So we don't want that information. So what we can then do is we could use a split command. So I can just go, hey, uh, VTX string equals, so I've got my cat stock on there. Let's do that again. VTX string equals VTX string, okay? Um, and then we're going to do a split, split, Okay, uh, and we'll split it based on uh, this character here. Okay, and what we'll say is, well, look, I want you to split the string based on this character, and I want everything after that string, which is our numbers. Okay, so you can see we're kind of focusing in on the numbers now. Great. Okay. Um, so the one here means so so zero would give me everything before the numbers. So what's going to give? It's going to give me a list, two lists, the stuff before, because it's going to split it on this. Um, character here, so it'll give me the stuff before the character in index 0, and the stuff after the character in index 1. And I want the stuff after the character, so I'm specifying index 1 here. So now let's go print vtx string, and let's see what happens. Select a couple of objects, let's, uh, yeah, 
Let's press, let's, let's run the command. So you can see it's it's stripping this off now. Now all we've got is the numbers. So now what we want to do is pull the numbers out of that string, okay? Now the best way to do this is to actually use something called a regular expression. Um, uh, a regular expression is just kind of a, a, a way of specifying uh, things that you want to find in a string. So what you're doing is you're specifying character patterns that might appear in a string. So you might have a regular expression to check whether something's an author, you know, uh, 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 looks like an email or whether something looks like a postcode or something like that. Okay. So what we want to do is write a regular expression to find all the numbers in this string. Okay. So we need to import the regular expression. So we're going to go import because it's an extra library. So just go import re. Okay. Then what we're going to do is for our regular expression, the output of the regular expression will be a list of um, numbers. In fact, the numbers will still be in the form of a string, but for our purposes, that doesn't cause a problem. Um, because if you remember uh, back to early in the tutorial, we we're actually specifying the number as part of a string anyway. OK, uh, and you'll see us do that in a moment if that doesn't make sense. So the fact that the number is a string isn't a problem. It's just the fact that we've got lots of numbers in the same string. That's a problem. What we need to do is put those numbers in separate strings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create something called VTX. I'll create another variable called VTX list. OK, and this is what we're going to do. So the regular expression is going to put all the numbers it's found into this list, okay? Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go re.find all. So this will just find find all the things that match this criteria um, uh, 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 within 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 the string, okay? And um, so what we're going to say is we're going to go the matching criteria. And um, so there's lots of tutorials you can do. You can look up regular expressions on uh, Google. I'm not going to go and cover regular expressions now because that would be a whole massive tutorial and we don't want to do that, okay? But the regular expression I'm using here is, uh, or the matching pattern that I'm using here is uh, this one here, okay? All right, so this is our matching pattern, right? And basically, uh, backslash D basically means a number, okay? And the plus sign means uh, any number of numbers, okay? As long as they're um, uh, consecutive, OK. All right. And that's what I'm trying to match. So I'm just trying to match any number plus uh, any number of numbers as long as they're consecutive. Count that as one number. OK, great. So that's our matching string. And then obviously the string that we, we're actually trying to find the matches on is our VTX string here. So we're just going to specify that. OK, so then what I'll do is I'm just going to go print uh, VTX uh, list so we can kind of see what's happening here. Let's have a look. So select a couple of these. Uh, boom, there we go. Uh, so you can see here we have a list and we've got our numbers in our list. Brilliant. OK, so you can see here we are. We've now got our numbers in a list rather than with these sort of, you know, in, in the same string. OK, great. OK, so now what we can do is we can loop through. Uh, uh, each of these uh, numbers and select the vertex. But before we do that, uh, if you remember rightly, um, what we needed to do, uh, let's see if I can just come up with an example here. Just, just put this script back here. Okay, we just look at this script here. If you remember, what we need to do is we need to specify the object, okay, on which to, the object name, the object on which we are. Um, uh, selecting our uh, vertexes, okay? Um, so if we go back to the um, object name here, so I'm just going to hash this out so it doesn't run. There we go. Uh, if we go back to the object list here and we just um, print out the object list, I'm just going to print obj list quickly again and then just to select a couple of things. Let's have a look what's actually happening here in a bit more detail. I'm just going to select these lines to run for this purpose here. So you'll see that um, before it says face and the number of the face, it actually says uh, the actual object that the face belongs to. So what we want to do is we want to extract this. So from the original object name or, or sorry, from the original, yeah, the original object in our list, we want to extract the name. And again, we can just do a split. We can do a split based on this dot here. OK, so I can create a variable called obj name. OK, and remember, 
uh, within this loop, um, this uh, object name here will be inside of the OBJ object. Okay, so I can go uh, OBJ uh, object name equals uh, OBJ dot split, um, and we're going to split it based on this. Okay, all right. Uh, and then again, and then what we want to do is we want the bit of the string before, so ignore the U, um, that's not going to come into, uh, that's not going to cause us a problem, okay? Um, so the bit before the dot, uh, so we want the bit before the dot, okay? So we're going to again specify which will be indexed as zero. So again, we'll just put a zero index after that, okay? So now if I go print object name, uh, OBJ name, what you should see, I'm going to just remove this print here. Let's run that again. Boom, you can see we've extracted the object name. So now we're ready to uh, loop through all those vertices uh, and select them. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we'll create another loop. So I'm going to go for uh, VTX, so vertex in VTX list in vertex list. Okay, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to use the select command, just like we did previously. Okay, uh, and select the, uh, uh, each vertex. Okay, so I'm going to select. Now what we need to do is kind of composite this together from all the bits of information we've got. So we know we're selecting a vertex, uh, we know we're selecting the object based on OBJ name, and we know that we're selecting the, the number of the vertex we're selecting will be based on the value in the VTX variable for that particular loop. Okay, So we can put all those bits together to do our select. Okay, So the way that we do that is we go OBJ name. And we basically concatenate all the elements together. So that will give us P sphere. Then what we need to do is go plus, and then we're going to put a string together, so dot VTX, to tell it that we're going to select a vertex. And obviously we need to open the brackets before we then specify the number. So now we're going to put in the number, which will be VTX. So it will be the number that's stored in this, for this loop. Okay, and then we go plus. And then we've got to close those brackets as well. So we've got to just again, create a string where we're closing those brackets, okay? So you can see that, you know, we've got bits of literal string here and bits of variables here, but we're putting them all together to create this, okay? Um, uh, uh, or something in this form. Now, the other, other thing that we need to do as well is um, uh, I, I, I'm going to be selecting multiple objects here. So what I need to do is I need to, rather than just... Um, uh, rather than just kind of remove every selection we've got and select this vertex, what I want to do is add this vertex to the to the selection, okay? So I just want to go add equals true. It just means that it'll add this vertex to the selection. Okay, let's see how this behaves. So I'm just going to go here and here. Let's run that. And there you are. You can see we've converted our face selection to a vertex selection, okay? And what you'll see is we can do this with uh, multiple objects. So it will deal with it being on multiple objects. So I'm just going to put in a sphere here. It's just sort of, oh, sorry, not a sphere, it's a cube. I can't remember my shapes. Okay. So again, I'm going to select a face on there and then hopefully uh, we'll go face mode uh, there and There we go. So I've got a couple of faces selected there and a couple of faces selected there. Let's run the script. Boom. And you can see that it handles the fact that I've selected faces on different objects perfectly well. Okay. All right. Excellent. So that's just an example of uh, how we could do po component based selection. And hopefully you can kind of use that as a point jumping off point for doing your own ideas uh, that might need um, component based selection. Okay. Thank you.